Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new game of StarCraft 2. This is going to be a professional game between two of the, yeah, probably two of the best players in their respective races. It's going to be spawning in the bottom left corner as the Blue Protoss. One of the most popular foreign Protoss players. It's going to be none other than Teamless, yeah, I gotta say that, Nanoa. And his opponent for this game is going to be none other than probably like the most up and coming player even though she's already kind of at the top it's going to be none other than Acer Scarlet. Now, now I actually say that, it's going to be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, Scarlet actually slowly but steadily she's climbing kind of to the top of the StarCraft 2 leagues like um, she's winning games versus the best players in the entire freaking world. Actually she recently um, it was announced that Axiom is going to team up with Team Acer um, and both of them are going to participate in the GSTL of course the uh, GOM TV um, team league version of uh, StarCraft 2 in uh, Korea. So that's going to be really, really interesting um, how that is going to be. Um, Scarlet is actually, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she is going to be probably the so-called breakout player in 2013, even though she's kind of already broken out, um, steadily climbing to the top, but I wouldn't be surprised if she starts winning tournament left and right in 2013, somewhat kind of like Stefano did in 2012. I'm going to be interested, but I'm calling it right now. Scarlet 2013 is gonna happen. Happen. Um, of course, the opponent for Scarlet is going to be none other than Naniwa. Naniwa, of course, um, also actually being known one of the best Protoss players um, that isn't Korean in the entire world. Um, he's actually teamless currently, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he actually he probably has a pretty hard time to find a team in general because he basically was in pretty much all of the teams and he had some troubles with teams in the past, but we aren't really going to be talking about that because he is already opening up with a gateway. He's actually not going for the Nexus first, which is of course probably the uh, most standard opener right now um, in Zerg vs Protoss. Well, maybe not the Nexus first, but at least going for the early Nexus, but no, Nanua not doing any of that. He's actually going to open up with a gateway first. Double gas is already being taken, followed up by a Sabernetic score, and I wonder, is he gonna start a Zealot soon? If he is, he might actually. Um, this is going to be a relatively old opener in Zerg vs. Yeah, he actually is going to start that right there. So, uh, one, actually one cute little thing to note right here. He only has two drones, or two probes rather, mining in each assimilator at this point in the game. So, uh, this will give him a little bit less in uh, less gas income um, than you would usually get if you get three drones in there. But of course, he has four drones, or four probes rather, uh, mining gas right now. And he's going to add another pylon right now. But yeah, this is going to be interesting how he's going to... Um, um, use this build order that's relatively old school with a little bit of a modern twist apparently. Is he going to start a sentry on a stalker soon as well? One on gas, is he going to start it? Yeah, there we go, this, uh, the sentry going on as well. But there we go, of course, um, Scarlet already knows about this, she saw it with the Overlord and she actually decided to send out a bunch of Zerglings to go across the map and see what is going on. Um, we see a probe moving out just right now um, by Nanua and he's going to see that uh, pretty much everything is going on standardly as well um, for Scarlet. However, Scarlet not going to go for the third base and she added a gas guy, so really, really early. So that is going to be interesting, like I already mentioned, um, all Protoss players in the world right now now, or all Zerg players in the world right now versus Protoss players are mostly going for the Stefano kind of opening, um, which means they add an early third base, but here we go, we see the Nexus going down um, for Nanua, and Scarlet actually didn't grab a vision of that, but she probably noticed it um, by the double gases, and I don't actually know if, yeah, she's actually just gonna go for a third base um, without even scouting the natural of Nanua. Um, of course, going on one base only might mean that he's going for a really aggressive play, um, such as maybe a three-gate stalker blink kind of play, or maybe like four-gate or whatever, but uh, Scarlet apparently she knows what is uh, what Nanawa's plan is and she simply is like, yeah, screw that, I'm just gonna get the uh, Zerking speed going, not gonna mine any more gas in my gas guys and get a third base up, I don't give a damn. Um, <laughs> it might be that he's gonna forgate me, but I probably will be able to scout so, and of course at this point in the game, well, he knows there's a pylon going down right now, um, or she knows rather, um, that the pylon is going down at the natural of um, Nanawa. So here we go, the Zerglings are going to scout everything that is going on, she sees um, two sentries out right now, as well as a Zealot, as well as a Forge on the low ground, so this will definitely mean that it's going to be some standard play, however, woo, there we go, the Warp Prism is already going down, of course the Warp Prism um, allows you to warp in units across the map with a flying object, so what might happen is that she actually, tr or he actually um, tries to, yeah, he's actually already rallying it across the map um, to the main base of Ace Scarlet, and he might be trying to um, pick up those sentries in the warp prism, 
And is he going to do so? I'm actually curious if he's going to do so. No, come on, come on. No, he's not going to do so. He's actually going to show it to the uh, to the vision of the of the Zerglings right now. Scarlet knows exactly what is going on, and the War Prism is going to fly away across the map anyway. Um, right now, the first Immortal is on the way as well for Nanowa. Actually, it's my musical. There we go. Music going on right now. Perfect. Seven minutes into the game. No problem whatsoever. There we go. Um, we are going to see a Road Warren and an Evolution Chamber follow up. Um, for Scarlet, of course, the Zerkling speed is already up, so she will have pretty much everything that is required to defend against this War Prism. But a few Zerklings are going to hang uh, just underneath the uh, the War Prism, so nothing will be able to get warped in. And actually, this War Prism is going to be completely useless. But he might just be using this War Prism for Skyrim. Now, I actually, take a look at it. Like, it's actually only costing minerals. Let's actually take a look at that. I don't actually know that information that well. Yeah, it's only 200 minerals, and he is, of course, not getting an Observer out on the map right now. Everything is being scouted he can put aggression up with this little war prism and on top of that he's not wasting any gas but also he's forcing all these units out of scarlet which is kind of a huge thing at this point in the game because when we take a look at the income tab while the zerg player is ahead all these zerglings at this point in the game could have been drones which means um that could have been nine more drones up and that would have actually made a difference between light and day light and day light and and light and dark dark and night night i don't i don't know what the english saying is but yeah um <laughs> <laughs> so here we see actually like, some cute little play right there with the war prism not going to use it to do any kind of aggression Just going to use it as a 200 mineral scout actually immortals being saved up right now colossus on the way as well So it looks like Nanua is going to go for some huge ass two base aggression um, As a protoss player of course this is going to be really interesting because if he will be able to do enough damage with this, he might be able to get the full game right in his favor right now. But here we go. Is he actually... Yeah, there we see the Overseer going down right now at the, at this point in the game. Looks like the lair is finished. The warp, uh, the macro hatchery is going down as well as well as the um, roach beat. So if Scarlet... Yeah, actually, Scarlet is going to start a lot of units right now. 12 roaches already on the production tab. But will it be enough to deal with the eminent threat of the Protoss player? Here we actually see him moving out, warping in a bunch more... Uh, a bunch more sentries three immortals and a colossus most likely gonna wall himself in completely there we go and he's actually going to use this war prism that he made earlier um, that he used instead of a um, observer going to use this to warp in for him um, really, really cool player right now from Nanewa. He's actually chrono boosting out the plus one ground weapons upgrade as well. But I don't think this will be timed properly because it looks like he's going to be engaging before this might happen. So here we go. He's going to put down the war prism. Going to uh, warp in some more stalkers right now. But of course, the creep is already at the fort base. There's a lot of armies right here um, waiting to actually engage this Protoss player from two sides. We see a few roaches right here on top of the ramp as well as a lot of roaches right here on the bottom. Of course, so here we go. It looks like Scarlet is going to move up a little. Bit. Is she going to decide to move in right now? No, there we see some nice forces going up. But is it going to be enough? Looks like a bunch of roaches are actually going to target fire these immortals that are on the map right now. And he is going to target fire the best he can. But will it be enough? I don't actually know because at this point, of course, the Zerg will be producing a lot of units, but so will Naniwa be. And Naniwa, of course, has these immortals out. He's actually going to do some nice micro work there, picking up the weakened immortals. And he's actually not losing too, too many of them. However, the, right now, the Colossus is being target fire. Once those Colossus go down, it might get a lot harder for um, Naniwa to do anything at all. And it looks like Scarlet will have enough to actually clean up this two base push from Naniwa. I'm actually interested. Is he going to follow this up in an expansion? At all the Colossus is trying to be a sneaky bastard and get away. He's like, nope, I actually am not here. And Scarlet actually knows the uh, the Colossus is somewhere on the map. She's going to try and look for it, but here we go. Is she going to find it? Looks like yeah, that she actually does mind that or does find that little uh, that little Colossus, and it is going down. There we go. The third base of the Protoss player is being blocked right now. It's going to be almost 120 supply um, for the Zerg player versus only 60 for the Protoss player. So this is going to be a huge advantage that Scarlet has. I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlet would throw up a uh, fourth base really, really quickly. Of course, she's already in four hatcheries. She's starting the plus two attack right now for the uh, Roaches. But at this point in time, she's still stuck. On this kind of attack only right now the infestation pit is going down at this point she only has a roach circling even though she's ahead in supply even though she has a big advantage at this point in the game it might still like swing back in Naniwa's favor just because Scarlet is up with really low tech units whereas of course Naniwa is already having Colossus out so she's once again going to scout and see what is going on she notices that the forge is upgrading once again so it might be that Naniwa is just going to save up once again on two bases 
and go for an even bigger push in a little while. So there we see the second Colossus already joining the fight. Still no aggression uh, up until the third base right now uh, from Naniwa. Naniwa doesn't like, like, he doesn't look like he's going to try and take this third base at any point. Um, in this game, he's actually going to warp in more and more Zealots, going to use, of course, the long range from those Colossus to most likely do a bunch of damage to the Protoss or for, to the Zerg army. A few nice force fields going up, just separating and putting a little bit of distance between the Zerg forces and the Protoss forces, so he might be able to take the third base um, at the 14 minute mark in the game. But of course, the fourth base is already almost about to be done for the Zerg player at this point in the game. Hive is on the way, as well as a Spire right now. In, I wouldn't be surprised yet that we actually see five Infestors already being across or like already in the production tab right now a few finishing up at this point in the game and it looks like scarlet is in a firm position to take this game of course the creep has to dissipate a little while before actually um, having the possibility of taking this third base right now but look at the tiny army that nanoa has at this point of course um, scarlet is going to try and go for the brutal investor army because brutal investor is absolutely awesome there we see the spire finishing up at the exact same time um, as the hive is finishing up so she can go for the great aspire right away however the observer has full vision of this he she actually or he actually knows the exact timing of the hive right now and he also knows that there will most likely be um, a bunch of corruptors on the way right now and he's completely right with that he's also or she's already also going to start a bunch of spine crawlers right now at the bottom of the fourth ramp and as long as she's just or he is no he ah, i'm confused she is just denying this third base there we go actually the third base being once again cancelled by Ace of Scarlet and Naniwa doesn't have any option to go and but once again and take the Nexus at the third base. He's just going to try and make as many Colossus as he possibly can. Actually, more and more Colossus on the production tab, as well as a Warp Prism. So he might get a little bit more aggressive as soon as this um, Warp Prism finishes. But right now, there's going to be a lot of Colossus out on the map. The Greatest Spire, however, is starting to morph in. We see a bunch of Corruptors on the map somewhere as well. Actually, there they are. Oh my god, this is actually a fearsome army of Corruptors. He's actually going to try and push in a little bit into the third base of Naniwa. But Naniwa has this big ass force right now trying to move across the map um, even though Scarlet doesn't have the highest tech units at all um, she has pretty good upgrades going on right now the um, plus three armor looks like it's actually on the way right now or the plus one or the plus three range rather it's on the way right now as well as the plus one melee attack so here we go the uh, pylon is going to be picked up and it looks like um, Nanawa is going to try and get as aggressive as we can he's actually uh, she is actually going to target fire all those colossus down uh, with the corrupt is not going to put too much engagement going on right now He's actually going to, or she's actually going to throw down as many Infested Terrans as humanly possible. And he's actually going to throw back the Protoss player for now. Warping in more and more Stalkers, of course, going to try and deal with all those Colossus or with all the uh, Corruptors that are on the map right now. Nice blink back with Nanua Stalkers, but is it going to be enough? I highly doubt it. And Nanua GG is out of the game. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and favorite button, um, button right below the video. And as always, don't forget to smile and hopefully I see you again. Bye!